product management is diverse and it has a lot of flavors. Every product open position that you see online will not be a good fit for you. So if you're an aspiring product manager who's trying to get into product management, or if you're someone who is trying to switch to a product management role, watch this podcast until the end to understand the different flavors of product management at different stages. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast, Everything Product. In this channel, we talk about latest technologies with a product mindset. This is Fani Voyuru. I'm a platform product manager at Intuit. Uh, this is Sitsaladi. I'm a, a product manager at Best Buy. So I bootstrap products at Best Buy. Hey, uh, this is Srinath. I'm the product operations manager at Twilio. Awesome. Um, we have a very interesting topic today. As you have seen, we are three different product managers working for three different companies on three different roles. We want to talk about different types of product managers in, in different companies. Sidhu, let me start with a simple question. Why do you think there are different types of product managers in the company? Yeah, funny. So uh, I'd say in, in product management, right? Like when you look at the roles, the two biggest variables are uh, the stage of the company and also the stage of the product, right? I think that defines the work which a product manager does. And it varies from strategy to execution in all of these uh, different variables here. So uh, a, a product manager at a startup level does something different from a product manager at a growth level. And a product manager who is developing an early stage product does something different than a product manager who is working on a uh, you know mature product. So it's very difficult. So maybe let's uh, try to dig deep into each of these scenarios and see how a product manager contributes to the success of a product or a company. Uh, so in that, uh, maybe let's start with a startup here, right? A uh, startup stage. So what do you think, uh, uh, Sri Srinath? My experience, uh, what I've seen, uh, some of the uh, startup uh, product managers, uh, like their primary responsibilities uh, uh, are like um, they own uh, like kind of uh, the complete product uh, end to end. So they have more ownership. They're probably operating as a single threaded leader, taking that idea uh, or taking that product from ideation to the launch. Uh, so they define kind of the what the vision is, what the requirements are, and closely work with engineering and implementing that. So, uh, so they have probably, I mean, they have, they need more ownership and have a great vision uh, prior to launching that. I mean, I think. That's yeah, I, 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 I kind of, yeah, I agree with that. Like, because, um, so it's, it's more um, focused on discovery, I guess, right? Like we're talking to customers, trying to understand what the problems is, problem is, and also their main goal is to reach uh, product market fit. You know, that's critical for any startup, right? To have that critical mass and, uh, know that people find value in your product and start using your product. So that's where discovery helps. And there's less tactical maybe execution uh, because, you know, that's maybe telling the engineering teams what to build and not majorly focusing a lot on that piece and focusing more on getting feedback to the customers and all of that stuff. I, I yeah. actually have a slightly different point to do because it's a startup. So what you would basically do is you would need to be focused a lot on discovery because you're taking a product probably from like zero to one. So nothing exists. So you need to do a lot of research and you might be doing a lot of technical exec uh, tactical execution as well, because in a startup, you have very limited people. So at least uh, in my past experience, right? Let's take Wayfair as an example. Wayfair, even though it's a bigger company, it still operates as a startup. You have limited people. So you will see product managers who are very hands-on. I worked with product managers who literally knows tables in and out. They tell engineers exactly to say, hey, in order for me to work on this, I need you to go and update uh, probably tables like this, data like this, et cetera. So I've seen uh, both sides of things. You will be like very deep into discovery and you will be doing a lot of technical ex uh, tactical execution as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it 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 all varies, right? Like based on the culture and what you what's important, right? Uh, to get that market out, uh, product out. Sorry. So my my experience in my previous um, company, right? I was working for this startup, which was a eighty member team or so. So there was one director of product management, and I was the only product manager working on all. So my experience was like um, uh, from user, uh, 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 you know, research 
uh, to defining what the vision is right for that product and making sure that aligns to the strategic vision of the company and also defining what we want to uh, uh, the, what the what the product strategy is right like product strategy is to reach that vision and also defining the metrics and then figuring figuring out what the features we want to build and then giving it to that to the uh, uh, the what do you say engineering teams was one one of the part and then as soon as you give it give it to the engineering teams right they start building things and i think uh, getting that faster feedback loops right even before they actually build the complete prototype complete product we do prototypes go back to the users test it out there's there's a loss, lot of hypothesis which we we want to test out and then launch the product so i think there's uh, in my experience, there has been a lot of discovery uh, and also launch activities where you actually uh, build that uh, uh, collateral material and also the help marketing team build the websites and all of that stuff. So I'd say it's, you know, you'll basically uh, do end to end as Srinath said, right? Like you'll be involved in a lot of different things. And it also helped me understand the whole product life cycle like how does a product come to fruition what what all it goes into getting a product out and all of that what, what do you think is uh the type of the product manager here right so there are, there are different terminologies that i hear like uh, uh generalist product manager growth product manager etc so what type of pms would fit into this startup stage yeah you could you could call the product manager as an innovation product manager or a zero to one zero to one product manager so you know, at a startup, right, even you're hired as a, a normal PM, you do all this zero to one work, but there are also matured organizations which have zero to one PMs that just focus on new features for the existing products, right? So I've, I was reading uh, about a, a product manager, director of product management at Twitter. Uh, Twitter. So she, I think uh, she was only focused on getting uh, Twitter blew out. Twitter, um, you know, subscriptions out and Twitter NFT avatars out and all of that stuff. So that, I think these are different uh, ways we can look at, but uh, that product manager could be called as a zero to one or an innovation product manager. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, plus one to what Sidhu said. And in addition, I've also seen a few roles where companies call like product manager, new products, like, and some of the similar roles where like product manager innovation. So I think every organization is different, but yes. Uh, but I think the Uber point is, I think probably that requires a different, uh, like a like little advanced skill set uh, if you are, especially in a startup uh, versus uh, maybe in a growth PM uh, where they may just take an existing idea and take it to the next level versus in new product, uh, sorry, a product manager who focuses on the new products probably need to um, think out loud, I think big taking that product uh, from ideation to the market. Yeah. And so I th also, I think uh, zero to one is completely different from, you know, maybe one to 10 or one to 50, right? Like where we are incubating uh, something new completely in this side and on the other side where you're trying to add more value and uh, bring in more customers. I think that brings into our next discussion or the next stage, which is the growth phase. So funny, what do you think a growth phase is? So yeah, typically, right, you've uh, proven your product, you understood the market fit, and then you launched and you continue to grow your customers, right? Now, at this stage of the product, you basically need to figure out how you can scale it. And I think that is where the growth product manager comes into place. Yeah. So more than the actual product development, right? Like what are the new features that you want to build in the product? You're basically looking at your funnel conversions. So you'll be very focused on uh, what is the number of customers that are coming to top of the funnel. When I say top of the funnel here, basically, let's say you have five pages where a customer has to go and fill an application. So you'll be looking at all kinds of efficiencies that you can do to continue to convert these uh, stages. So you'll be doing a lot of research again, but the research that you'll be uh, doing here is focused on your current customers. At least that's what I've observed. You'll reach out to the customers, do interviews, and see where they're dropping off and continue to enhance the product there. What so, do you guys think? Yeah, so uh, so this is basically more working more close with the marketing teams, right? Trying to see what the top of the funnel, bottom of the funnel is, and how people are converting, and what's the growth rates and all. I'm assuming there's also where uh, product managers define 
uh, the strategy and also do experimentation to see what is the uh, path we could take to get more conversions in, right? Like, you know, uh, maybe I think in growth, there is virality, there are funnels and all of these things, explore these areas and see where we can actually acquire more customers mm -hmm. and also get to the pain points of the customers to see if they're actually getting enough value or not. I, I think yeah. there are a lot of... Uh, metrics that go into this, uh, figuring yeah. out all of these things. In simple terms, the way I see this is a startup manage, product manager will take a product from zero to one and a growth product manager probably is taking that product from one to N. So, and the way growth product manager uh, that I've seen in the past is, I think just to add to both of your points is, how do we reduce the customer, existing customer friction uh, in the product uh, development, like in the product journey, in their journey, for instance, taking an example of what Funny mentioned, like if you have a customer needs uh, to complete five steps in order to complete the application, how can we make it to one page so everything can be populated and just complete in single one step? So that's where I see growth product manager. And yeah, I think met from metric standpoint, it's all like kind of what you already mentioned, adoption, conversion, or like sometimes like, especially if you're, if a growth product manager is working on an onboarding experience, that's where you think about uh, what is the mean time that customers are taking to onboard and how do you reduce that and that kind of stuff. So, so I want to I, actually I, double click on the uh, AV testing also, right? Uh, testing that Sidhu has mentioned. So I've done this a lot as well. So you're you're trying to convert what uh, you're trying to convert a customer from like one stage to another or like one page to another. And at this point, you know that the customers are coming and you need to figure out what works versus what doesn't work. And that's where you will do a lot of A-B testing here or the lot of multivariate testing to see like what is actually helping one customer versus the other. And I think you will focus a lot on uh, defining the customer persona as well in this stage. Because based on the customer person, if you go to QuickBooks right now, QuickBooks has different variations of the product shown to different customers. And the primary reason is they understand that customer really well to show what is relevant to them. And that's a really good point, right? So you, you, you basically have a product market fit in a startup. And once you find that the next phase is getting into put that product in a way that customers buy, right? By, by the persona messaging and all of that, And you change that. And also I think that, it's it's a good skill to have, right? To understand what the user behavior is and also the customer psychology is, right? I think um, when I've used Google Analytics, right? You see where the customer drops in and what page he visits the most and why is he dropping? And I think these are some data points which a growth product manager could work on to make it more smooth. Yeah. Actually, I want to add yeah. one more thing here, right? The retention. I think that plays a key role here too, because at this point, what you're aware you're at is you have good amount of customers who are actually coming and using the product. So if you don't retain those customers, that's that's another bigger problem. So growth product manager, I think focuses a lot on that as well. So what is your overall conversion? What is your overall success rate? Let's say you are a product manager who is working for a mortgage application. So what is your overall conversion to get there? Or let's say if you're a product manager of Instagram, what is, what is the overall time that a customer is spending on Instagram? So these would be some of these focus metrics that you'll be looking at to either grow your customer base or you or to continue to retain the current customers you have. Yeah, yeah. No. that's a great point. Maybe one example would be, right, um, um, I know that, let, let's compare, maybe see, like, you have Facebook, right? Facebook and Twitter, I think, started just two two years apart, but uh, Facebook has grown to 2 billion users, but three, Twitter is still at 300 million users. So there's definitely a growth problem there. Maybe not having the right features or not appealing to the uh, the broader segment of people, or maybe they're just focusing on a specific user who's who's already, they've reached the potential of that user. So that could also be an example, right? That's true. Cool. Yeah, let's so, go to the expansion then. Yeah, let's let's move on to expansion. So, what's your take on that? Yeah, I, I yeah, go ahead. 
Let me start a little bit and then I'll pass it to Srinath. So I'm a platform product manager, right? I think platform product managers plays a very key role in the growth and the expansion phases. The, uh, the way I would think of an expansion phase, right? You have a product. The product is established. You know the market fit. The product has also expanded to like different stage. You have good conversions from a customer standpoint. Now you are thinking about expanding your products to different verticals. So let's take an Intuit case, right? Intuit uses, Intuit has Mint, Credit, Karma, QuickBooks, and TurboTax. There are four different products and there are a lot, there could be a lot of uh, functionalities that could be common for that. So instead of each of these individual product teams building all of these features, then you think about building a platform that can be utilized by all of these products so that everyone can focus on the, their own individual objectives and continue to expand. The same applies for new products as well. Even if you want to bring a new vertical to your company, platform product managers play a very core key role in the expansion here. So, you know, why don't you add more details like from an operation standpoint here too? Yeah. So before I talk about operations, I just want to uh, confirm uh, from you. So what you are saying is platform product manager owns kind of the foundation framework and the individual PMs can build features on top of it. Is that what you mean? Yeah, the right word probably is uh, infrastructure. So right. we give all the right, we set up all the right infrastructure. We give the required APIs. Or even if you want, like uh, there is corresponding front end that you need that could be common across products. We build all of those capabilities and give it to the individual product PMs. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. So from product operations uh, standpoint, the way I see the expansion uh, product managers or product operations managers operate is they take an existing product to new marketplaces or they take an existing market like product to expand to new languages such as those. And uh, uh, it's especially uh, when we expand or scale to new marketplaces, it's very important uh, to consider various factors uh, as a PM because for instance, if you're expanding to new marketplaces, uh, the people's preferences may be different. There may be comp different compliance, security, privacy requirements that you all need to incorporate. So understanding the needs of the customer in a specific marketplace for a expansion PM is extremely important because it may not be a one size fits all. What a product which may work in US may not work in Europe because there are different compliance requirements in different uh, countries across Europe and they change by country. So you need to be, uh, you need to understand the local uh, sentiment, uh, local needs uh, as a growth PM. And in addition, uh, as, a, uh, as a, sorry, as an expansion PM, it's extremely important to make sure the localization aspect as well is considered uh, when rolling out the features because what you may call here, people may understand that, but if you use the same name there, people may not get that. So as an expansion PM, uh, you need to have like, you need to keep all this mind uh, when rolling out new features in new marketplaces or expanding. So I have a question here, uh, Srinath. So an operation PM basically concentrates more on the excellence or efficiency of um, uh, the processes, right? So you have a set of processes which or frameworks which product managers work on. So you focus on streamlining that. So do you use any tools or frameworks to process, uh, so to make these processes efficient, something like Six Sigma or theory of constraints or maybe five Ys? Like what is your process in making product managers toolbox more efficient? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So we use, I mean, it depends on the problem statement that we're trying to solve uh, because sometimes uh, it may just need a probably, how do you uh, roll out a launch plan? And launch plan is something probably you can use Excel and create what that launch playbook looks like. And in like in other cases, for instance, if you need to make sure your product meets the localization requirements uh, for that you need to uh, probably go through a localization tool where you get all the translations so how do you set up that tool so you can get all the translations necessary for your strings before ro roll out all the new features so as a product operations manager uh, you need to be extremely uh, mindful of the uh, local needs and design process because whatever you may design for instance if you're working 
for a product feature to launch in US and you may use a process. Uh, probably that could be completely different if you're launching in EU. For instance, if you're launching in US, you may not need translations apart from Spanish, but if you're launching the same product in Europe, you may need translations in various languages. So, so there's like the effi- problem we do. There's efficiency drive and there's also standardization. So exactly. uh, one, one, one follow-up question is like, change is difficult right like you sometimes people could resist change so how do you deal with that like do you uh, say this is what you have to follow or do you just prescribe and say this is a better way to do it yeah no that's a great question so as a product operations manager influencing without authority is extremely important and the way that we do is by testing uh, by doing experiments uh, and showing successful results even before that could be used live So for instance, if I am uh, basically working on a new process, which I recently was trying to roll out, uh, how do you get the feedback from all the customers through our uh, go-to-market, like go-to-market uh, stream teams, how do you get that to product and how do you take back that, take that back to the customers? So the way I do that is first, I myself uh, will test out that process as a product manager to make sure it works. and show the results before even they adopt because otherwise as you said change is i mean very difficult uh, because um, people may not feel confident about a process uh, unless they see results so the way you navigate is uh, collecting data and evidence uh, on how how good this could be and also maybe educating pm saying okay you know this is a better way of doing exactly. things exactly and also as you implement these processes it's i mean as i said it's important to measure results as well right that we do using various surveys uh, that we share across uh, different people and we also see see in kind of like for instance some metrics like average time to resolution before how much time was it taking currently how much time does it take in order to do the same thing such as those so do you also have to do like workshops and you know webinars where you show oh, the process lot because every process that we work once before it's being rolled out uh, we need to make sure the product managers are trained completely on that even before they can adopt uh, otherwise you may launch a process which may not be adopted that's right i think that that's a uh, there's always a problem where you say this is a good to do but there's no people who who are using it so there's a lot, lot of educating people and also marketing inside the organizations stuff saying that this exists please use this yeah as a, yeah you bring up a good point so as a product operations manager you need to be very good at enabling uh, people uh, with those uh, frameworks for that you need uh, good uh, i mean i would say maybe training skills as well um, so they get to know why we are doing something and what it is it for them if we do it yeah so i i have a question for funny also if if that's okay so um, you know sorry sorry we are jumping back into a platform product manager again but funny you are you are saying that you know you are basically enabling and building platform or apis and all the different things for product teams to build on top of it right so what if uh, the product itself is api driven right where you say that an external uh, b2b business is using your apis yep to uh, create a product on that so is that also pro- pro- platform product manager or is that something different i would still say it's a platform product manager i'll give you a good example right let's take square okay what does square do square is a payments platform and uh, they have few more things uh, i think they are also into like banking to a certain extent but they're primarily a payments platform but how are they selling their product everyone can use a uh, square in order to do payments and all they are giving to their external uh, parties is apis so now let's think a little bit about the customer segment here right so the customer segment that you are catering towards is a developer so any time you are thinking about a developer you are building a platform and your product can be utilized by internal developers who could be doing something else like in the uh, other case that we talked about or your product could be used by external developers to build something else so anything you do this way that enables a developer is a platform product manager or a platform product exactly yeah so also i was curious you know when i was working for bosch we had to do some translations and um, so it 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 is all api driven right so the number of translations we do 
are tied to the API calls we do, and that is tied to the amount they charges. So I'm assuming that's also mostly pro uh, platform stuff, right? Where external products are connecting to Google APIs to do translations, and then they pay by the number of API calls that happen. That's correct. So I, I'll put it that I'll put that also on the same bucket. Well, there is a slight distinction, right? So what I'm hearing is you're using external APIs that were used by one of your internal teams to do something else. So there are three layers that you talked about here, right? The very first layer of the Google APIs, the Google API would be built by a platform team. And then the internal team who's consuming it, that developer is my customer. Now that developer has built something else to give it to you. So this translation that you're talking about is not a platform. This is more of like you built a product that is scalable for other, other products. Yeah. yeah. Another good example probably is uh, like the Twilio, even our Sengrid uh, company where like a lot of customers use our APIs and provide a platform for customers to leverage that. For instance, we have various big customers uh, for Sengrid uh, who act as a resellers and customers use, uh, but those resellers use email API uh, at the back end to provide email service to that customer. So that's a good example probably for email platform. Actually, Sorry. I want to add one more thing here, right? Stakeholder management. So stakeholder management and managing with, uh, without authority, like Srinath was mentioning, right, is very crucial for product managers. So far, we talked about, uh, what do you say, a uh, new venture or a zero to one product manager, a growth product manager. And then we also talked about a platform product manager. The level of stakeholder management varies a lot at individual phases. I, in my opinion, a zero to product manager, stakeholder management might be very limited. You're talking to like close knit of people building a product and then launching it. Growth product manager would be talking to like internal stakeholders to a certain extent to make sure to define the right metrics, uh, make sure to launch the product, test it out, and then continue to report. A platform product manager scales a little bit more. So he or she is thinking about his own product. He's also talking about all the other product managers who wants these products. And then if this is a product, like Sidhu, you mentioned, if this product is going beyond uh, the current company, then you're also like working with different developers externally to understand what is going on build things and then report to your stakeholders yep so that's yeah. that's one of the important differentiations yeah well. no 100 percent i agree like for instance if you're expanding that product to new marketplaces right so there every country may have a different team so you may need to bring in their own unique requirements in terms of technology or training uh, like such as those so yeah and also like for instance every country probably may have a different marketing team, compliance team and all that stuff. So you probably work with so many different teams as an expansion uh, PM uh, versus startup or uh, the uh, platform. Yeah. And also as we discussed, right, I, 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 I you know when we look at the, uh, the bandwidth at which a platform product manager could work, right, he, he'll basically has to work on a lot of different levels and a lot of different areas and all of that stuff, right? So that's pretty interesting. I want to add one thing here, right? I was uh, Googling about type of product managers uh, before we talked to see like what, what are the interesting factors, uh, interesting finds I'll have. I saw one product manager name called Get Shit Done Product Manager. <laughs> yeah, and end of the day, we get paid to get shit done. <laughs> <laughs> So imagine the work of that person, right? Basically, you're like, dude, get shit done. Like, understand whatever is needed, do whatever. Right? Doesn't there is no defined role to say, okay, you do discovery, you do data analysis, whatever is done to like get that done. Yeah. Is that like a, another way of saying a maintenance PM? Like probably who is just keep keeping the lights on, <laughs> lights on. No, I don't think so. So I, I would put it this way, right? So uh, let's say there are very execution oriented uh, products. So let's think of uh, supply chain. So the way I think about supply chain is you have your operations teams that needs to probably move things across countries or move things across locations. So they know the right things, what needs to be done. But what you need to do basically with like crazy amount of operations work that's happening, you need to understand all of that, uh, convert it into actual requirements and get it done. I would say such PMs are more like 
get shit done product managers rather than just maintenance type yeah. got it yeah i yeah. hope no product manager is stuck in maintenance here <laughs> no, yeah, there is definitely some maintenance work every person does like in exactly. their portfolio but not just doing maintenance work yeah <laughs> definitely not exciting i guess yeah so yep. uh, i think a lot of good discussion here and we could i i i've seen a lot of you know we could get into details of like what is a difference between a product manager product owner and that things also maybe in the next videos and there's also another uh, thing that was interesting right like influencing without authority there are different ways to do it we could also get into one video where we discuss that but yeah good conversation yep. cool um, so do let's similar to what we end right let's end with this question so if there is two things that you want our listeners to take what would be those two things yeah so my two two cents here is that you know uh, just having a product manager title doesn't get you what you want to do so i think uh, the first thing is understand what you're good at like is it execution strategy or whatever or discovery right then figure out what is the closest uh, 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 job description that suits that right whether working uh, in a startup or a early stage company or a growth stage company or a established organization and also the maturity of the product so there's no one size fits all so it all depends on what you want to be and what your expertise is at so that's my biggest takeaway okay seen as what do you think now great point siddu uh, i think the key takeaways uh, from me are i mean as we all discussed today there are different phases of product management so it all depends on where you are strong at and what your interests are because every product manager uh, especially depending on uh, the company or the product the state of maturity it is uh, the product manager may need a different skill sets so it's just about uh, figuring out where you are strong at and where your interests are and accordingly uh, aim to that rather than just choosing a product manager title because for instance um, a expansion pm would need a lot of stakeholder collaborative skills so versus a startup uh, product manager so just uh, figuring out that would be very helpful yeah i that? yep i agree to that so depending on your skill set right everyone can find a product manager role if you are a software developer you can easily transition into a technical product manager we can where you don't lose the skill set that you have but you will continue to expand or let's say you are a non technical product manager you are coming in from like operations and marketing background then you can choose product management which is like growth or anything like that or if you are a data analyst who has a very strong background in data then you can find products where you are like a data product manager or an analytics product manager with that focus yep that's my key takeaway as well like anyone can find a product manager role based on their skill set yep awesome guys love the conversation thank you so much for your time um, we'll have uh, more conversations next week if you like the conversation please uh, like share and subscribe to your uh, to our channel and share it with your friends as well thank you thanks everyone see you all soon